Hey, what's going on guys, Tertiwerty here, and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial video. And in this video we are going to be going over events, and uh, let's get started. So, first I suppose I'd better explain uh, what an event actually is. So, an event is something where you will do something inside the game, and it will cause... It will trigger an event to happen, so something will happen depending on what you do inside of the game. So it's better to just uh, show you rather than explain. And yeah, so you want to create an event package inside of your main package. So dot event events inside of here, you want to do a class called event handler in fact no we want to have the event handler in um, in our main class so we'll have event example so we are not going to be going over how to create a specific event in this video um, instead we are just going to uh, make it a bit simpler and go over the basics of an event and what you can do with one. Uh, we all have separate videos on how to do certain things with events, um, but currently we are not going to. Um, the next video is going to be loot tables and that involves an event. Uh, we also have one on overriding, um, overriding loot tables, overriding crafting recipes, and uh, adding your custom seeds to grass. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. So inside of your class, you want to have a public void register, uh, no, not register, public void. And then this is the name of your event. So this can be called whatever you want. So mine is simply just going to be called example event. And inside the parameters, you want to... So, the parameters of an event can only have one parameter. So, there is only allowed to be one parameter in an event. And, um... Basically, this parameter has to be the actual event that you want to use. So, for example, um... If you type in event and control space, there should be... Okay, no, it's not coming up. So, um, let's just look at player event, for example. Player event event. And if you import player event from, yeah, that one. You can then go into this class and you'll see um, loads of different events. Right here. So, this is quite useful. Um, so, then you have this this um, argument or um, kind of called event with this you can do event dot and then you have for example uh, get entity so if you wanted to have entity entity is equal event dot get entity and then you can Whenever you want, you can just call entity dot, and you can do so many different things. Um, another thing is, if we look at event dot, um, there's a few things. So, uh, get entity player. So you can then have player player is equal event dot get player. In fact, it should be uh, entity player. My bad. Uh, we can have event dot get. Oh no, event dot result dot world um, event. Dot, there should be a world thingy. Uh, If we, I think we can do entity dot get world, entity dot get world, 
we'll get entity world. So yeah, you can have a world, world equal entity dot world. Um, but I think a better example would just be to use harvest drops event um, because that allows you to access much more things. So all the um, all the things inside of an event are usually different. So you know. And here we can do world world is equal to event dot get world. We can do um, what else is there? Event dot. You can do um, get harvester. So then you can have entity player player is equal to event dot get harvester. You can have event dot get pause. So you can have block pause pause is equal to event dot get pause. You can then get a state from that pause. So you can do world dot get uh, block state of pause because you can then have that as i block state state equal world in dot get block state it's always best to create these variables so you don't have to have uh, individual ones of these uh, all the time it's much better and uh, you can then do block block is equal state dot get block you can do, um, for example, item item is equal uh, block. Or no, is equal item dot get item from block of uh, block. So you can do all these different things. You can do. Let's see what else can you do. Oh, you can actually get the state straight away. So you can do. Um, I block state state is equal to event dot get state. That's much simpler. Uh, you can have a fortune level, so int fortune level. And this is all just saving you time. Obviously, this is an example of one event. Um, all events, as I say, will have different um, things. So is silk touching? So that would be, for example, a uh, boolean is silk touching. Uh, you can have boolean is cancelable is equal to event dot is cancelable. Uh, you can also have boolean is cancelled is equal to event dot is cancelled um, as I say there are many many things but uh, I want to go over most of them um, hopefully that will make it easier for you you can do the uh, event priority, so event don't get phase, and then you can have an event pri priority priority. You can have uh, so all of these things are going to be very useful to you. Uh, get drop chance. So you can have float get drop chance or just drop chance actually. You can have um, if you have item stack array items 
is equal to event dot get drops. In fact, it would be better to just call this drops. Wait. Oh yes, of course. So list, and then you can do list of item stack java dot util dot list. Uh, you can have. Is there any more? Event dot get class. So you can have like class, class. Right? Or am I just being. No, I'm being stupid. You can't do that. <laughs> um, has result. So like boolean has result and so as I say all these different things um, you can then obviously use these things to do for example if um, block is uh, dot equals uh, block in it dot uh, I don't know random block then you can do world dot set block state uh, pause and um, you can then do block in it dot so a block dot get default state and you could do a uh, world dot uh, spawn entity and um, new entity lightning bolt obviously you can then add the parameters once you've imported it to world and wait what are these so obviously doubles, double x, double y, double z. So um, actually, that's a good one. You can do um, state dot. Wait, no, you can't. You can do pause dot get x, pause dot get y, pause dot get z. This is actually very useful. So I should do. Um, double x is equal to pos dot get x double y is equal to pos dot get y double z is equal to pos dot get z and then you can just do x y z for the last one boolean effect only in just put true um, that's just an example. Obviously, there's many more things you can do, um, but that's down to you to work out those. And um, they're not difficult. Um, so yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, uh, actually, we need to register it. My bad. Let's go ahead and do that. So in Util Handlers, we need to create a new class. And call it event handler and inside of our registry handler we need to call our event handler inside of pre in it yep pre in it um, below register entity renderers so register regist no not registry handler Spoon event handler dot register events just like that and then in here you can do a public static void register events 
inside of here we first need to declare the event so we need to make an instance of it so we can do uh, event example example event is equal to new event example and then you need to do minecraft forge dot um, event bus dot register example event just like that and that should register um, if not you can actually go into your main class you can totally skip this event handler if you want and inside of pre init just here you do the exact same thing so uh, if that didn't work you can copy this from in here go to your main class and below this in pre init you can do that and that will work but don't have both otherwise your event will be registered twice and you don't really want that because it's not the greatest thing in the world so if you guys did enjoy this tutorial please do be sure to smash your face into that like button and subscribe if you really enjoyed please do be sure to share it and i'll see you guys in the next tutorial which will be on loot tables so goodbye